Hi and welcome to another lightning lecture presented to you by Xamarin University. My name is Rene, I'm a senior content developer and you can reach me at the Twitter handle that is shown here. Today I want to talk to you about reactive extensions and this lightning lecture will focus on using reactive extensions. It's not so much about the basics and what you can do with reactive extensions etc. We have a lot of great content about this already available on our Xamarin University website. So instead, we'll start by installing and adding reactive extensions, which are added as a NuGet package. You can see that here I'm searching for system.reactive. And once I found the correct NuGet package, I'm going to install it. At the time of this recording, the latest stable version is 4.0. And I'm adding this to all of the projects that I would like to use the extensions in. So with this in place, we can then uh, go ahead and focus on our first example, because this is really what I would like to show you today. It's about changing existing code and applying Rx instead. And we'll start by looking at an example that you know from our Android courses. We have these color sliders and you see as I change them, the background color of this application adjusts accordingly. Um, we want to have a look at the code as it currently is and then try to refactor it and apply reactive extensions to make it well simpler more readable more elegant that's the idea behind this so let's go back into visual studio and stop debugging and have a look at the original code you can see here that we have got three views each of these views is a so-called seek bar a slider and for every slider, we are currently installing a listener. Listeners are the, a way to inform our code about changes that are going on in the UI. We implement the I on seek bar change listener here. And for every seek bar, the on progress changed method will be called and it will inform us for which seek bar the change was and what the current value is. And from all the values that we have, we're going to generate a new color and that color is then eventually used to adjust the background of our application. So now let's see how we can change this. The first change that I'm going to make here is that I'm going to get rid of the change listener. And instead, I would like to use an event that is exposed here on the seek bar. You typically always have these two options with Xamarin. You can either use the native Java listeners via interfaces, or you can use these events. I'm changing here to the events because using the events allows me to turn this into or to use reactive extensions. So let's get this started. We now have the event and we want to change this into an observable, which is the main building block of every reactive extension example. And we can use the observable from event pattern method here that allows us to turn an event into an observable. Once we have an observable, we can subscribe to it, we can filter and so on. So let's start with something simple. We use from event pattern here. We tell it that what we're dealing with here are um, specific event arguments, in this case, progress changed event arguments. And then we give it information about the seek bar that we're looking for. In this case, it's the red one. Uh, we have to provide the name of the event that we want to listen here to. And with that in place, we're going to repeat it two more times for the green and the blue seek bar. Now, so far, not much difference compared to the original version, but here we go. Using observable.combine latest, latest, we can now combine together the three values from our three observables. So we have one observable per color for red, green, and blue. We now combine all of them, and this returns us another observable. So whenever there is one new value resulting of any of the sliders being changed, we will be informed. The idea behind Rx is that we always tell a story. So the story is observable combine latest. We want the latest value. Well, of what? 
from three sliders, red, green, and blue. Next step is, well, once we have these values, what are we gonna do with this? So this is the next step here, and I comment that with what do we want to get? And the parameter that we pass here is now a delegate that will be called, giving us access to these exact three observers that we have here. So every time one of them changes, we are generating a new color out of the values that each slider is representing. And then finally, I'm going to subscribe to this combined observer. Now this means whenever there is a new value available, and because we are generating a color type here, it knows that what we get here is a color, we can do something with it. So in our case, what is it that we do? Well, we have three text fields that we want to update. And of course, we want to change the background color. So all of this goes in here. Now there's a typo in there, it's lowercase color, there we have it, and done. So this is all the code that we need in order to read our three slider values, combine them into one color, and then update the background color, update our text fields. So you see there's one more optimization that we can do here. We no longer need to access the sliders directly. And there's a typo up here. So this should of course be the red, the green, and the blue. And now let's build it. And you see as I drag the slider, the background updates. So again, the idea is that we are telling a story. The latest value from what? Well, from three events then we have to tell it what to turn this information into. We're transforming it into a color. And then we're listening to changes of this specific color value. And we update the background color and we update our text fields. The color slider example that we just looked at here, which was taken from our Android 205 class, by the way, it didn't save us a lot of code. We removed some code that we originally had and we replaced it with approximately the same amount of code just using Rx extensions. The idea behind this first example was to show you how you can use Rx to tell a story. So this starts from getting some values, transforming these values into something and then subscribing and doing something with them. Now the next exercise that we're looking at is from our MVVM, MVC and MVP intro class at Xamarin 301, where we are implementing a type ahead search. And this is a really great example where Rx will help us to simplify the code and make it a lot better. So let's look at this. And here we are looking at the code. We are looking at the UWP version of the of the form solution. I could really pick any of the other platforms, whether it's Android or iOS, but I decided to use this one because I can run it directly here on Windows. And what we see is the main view model.cs file where we find a public property that the UI binds to. It's the search term property. And whenever that changes, we kick off a search. We have this helper method here on search term changed async which supports cancellation. So if you start a new search, then uh, the ongoing one will not be used as a result. And let's just have a look at this. It's better to see it in action. I'm gonna build it and I will do a search for star. That will return everything Star Trek and Star Wars. There's something for everybody. Here we have our results. And if we look at the application output, we find that it actually did two searches, one for S and one for star. And as I remove now character by character, and we look at the output again, we'll find that it did one, two, three, four searches in total. Every time I remove the character, it kicked off a search. It canceled the ongoing search, but really it only canceled outputting the result. So it did not really cancel what is um, issued against the server. So we have four requests running against the server and we're kicking all of them off from within our search term property. Every time the setter is called, we run this search and somehow this feels wrong. A property should be something that allows for quick updates. It should not do any long running um, 
operations like this one does here. So let's see how we can do better with Rx and just remove this for now. now. Of course, the app is no longer functional and we wanna bring the functionality back. And for now, we're gonna keep our on search term changed async method because well, it's kind of working. So let's think about this. We need to be informed about the text field in the UI being changed. And so far this has been done via the property, but really what is happening here is that the property is taking advantage or is implementing I notify property changed here. And this is an event and we already know how we can turn an event into an observable using our from event pattern method. Now, just like in our Android example, we tell it what we're interested in. This time it's property changed event arguments. The sender of this event in our case is this view model that we're currently in. And we are interested in property changed. And there it is. We have now an observable that we can listen to. And whenever there's a change in one of the properties, like here search term or movies, we will be informed. Of course, we are only interested in the search term property. So let's filter using the where extension. We can say we only want to be informed if the name of the property that has changed is equal to search term. And the property name is part of the property changed event arguments. So we filter for this. You see, we're already halfway there. We now have an observable that will inform us if the search term property changes. And now let's slow it down because we don't want to get each and every character immediately. We want to give the users a chance to type. And then after a short delay, we want to kick off our search. So we can use the throttle extension here. And for me, a value of 700 milliseconds that work quite well. And then we can subscribe. And in subscribe, well, we could now reuse our on search term changed async method. I'm quickly going to add this here. So we're not interested in any values. I'm just using underscore. We use on search term changed async and we pass in our search term property. And as I type now, you can see this is working just like before. However, it is not perfect yet because remember it's all about telling a story and taking advantage of the nice features that Rx is giving us here. And you also notice how we get these green squiggles here. So um, we could ignore them, but let's just transform this into something that is well true Rx and not just half of the story. In our on search term changed async method, we are using this cancellation token and source. And you see that's quite some code. And it turns out that the Rx extensions, they can handle this on our behalf. So I just commented out all of this. And the essence of this method is this movie service. This is what communicates with the web server and retrieves the results. And currently this movie service is generated every time. So let's optimize this first. We create one instance of that movie service. And here we have the call where we get our movies asynchronously. So this is the, the actual call that we are making. And somehow we want to include this now here into our, into our reactive expression. So whenever we are getting back something from the input field, throttled by 700 milliseconds, we want to project it. That's why we are calling select. And now here's the next piece of magic of Rx. We can use observable.fromAsync to turn an asynchronous method into something that can be observed. So here using from async, we provide our method, which is the get movies for search async. And here's another thing. From async, the observable from async it supports a cancellation token. So you see, I don't have to declare this anywhere. I just say this cancellation token is what I would like to use. And by the way, I'm also adding this optimization of configure weight false here because there's no need for us here to capture the context. And then 
in the in the body here in this method I can check if cancellation has been requested and if it has been requested then we are returning an empty list of movies we're not returning any matches and otherwise we are returning whatever our service found so you see again how this is um, starting to become a true story we create our observable we tell it what we are listening for we then modify it a bit we project it and in the end we subscribe to it however there's one more thing that we can optimize right now if we kick off two searches it could be that the previous search takes longer than the last one and the result would be that as our users type the search results would not match what they are actually looking for and therefore we can use switch so what switch does is it observes the current observable until there's a new one and then it cancels the previous one and we have that cancellation token there so you see all of this cancellation will happen automatically and then the final step is our subscription and in there we assign the found movies to our uh, property that is then data bound to the ui to the list view that we have in there and with that our story is complete we can actually completely remove this text changed observable there we don't need that variable and there we have it we are listening to property changed which is our event but only for the property that is called search term we then slow it a bit down we then project it because we are not interested in in the property change itself we are interested in a search result so that's what we do in here we take advantage of the automatic cancellation by using switch eventually we subscribe and then we can run this application and it will be super fast it uh, is less code now it is more readable it is easier to maintain and it's just the better solution the last example that we want to look at now is not from an actual exercise from one of our Xamarin University courses but it is inspired by something that we have on a slide in our classes about async and await and tasks it's about finding the cheapest flight price going from one city to another and to yeah, represent this I have built a little .NET core application you can find that in the github repo that is linked in the description for this lightning lecture so we have got in this case three different airlines and we want to fly from Munich to San Francisco uh, we could have an arbitrary number of airlines just pick three here American Airlines Delta and United and then we have a flight price checker class here which behind the scenes is supposed to do the communication with the airline servers so every implementation has got to get prices async and we pass it from where to where we would like to fly it's then generating some output here and of course I'm not really communicating with any servers here so I'm just uh, creating a mock implementation here we do a random delay simulating the network communication and then we create a list of flights so every airline has between three and maximum 20 flights that go from Munich to San Francisco and each flight has got a random price between 1000 and 2000 and all of this is returned into uh, in a list and that's what we use in the UI and the challenge is now that we don't know how many airlines we have like I said in this case it's just three but the example would work with an arbitrary amount of airlines and we want to search for flight prices for all of them in parallel so we don't want to wait for the uh, American Airlines web request to complete and then kick off the next one and then kick off the next one no we just want to kick off all of them in parallel and whenever a new price has arrived and we have a new cheapest price we would like to display that so here's the traditional way of handling this we add all of our tasks into a list we then wait for one of them to complete we don't care which one it is that could be American Delta or United we then remove it and then we have a list of prices from this airline and we pass this to a helper method and the helper method is now iterating over the flight prices going from Munich to San Francisco and it checks if there is a flight that is cheaper than the one that we have found so far and if yes it's going to assign this to our property which may may then be data bound to some element in the UI so we always display the cheapest flight price 
the moment we find it. So that means we have this piece of code here and we have this while loop here. And again, the challenge is to, well, hopefully simplify this using Rx. But let's first see this in action. You see we're getting flight prices and it takes a bit. These are the random delays. And in this run here, the prices happen to return exactly the order, American Airlines, Delta United, and the cheapest one is by American Airlines. Now, if I run this again, gonna wait, and you see this time, different order, United returns first, then American Airlines, and then Delta, and again, American Airlines has got the cheapest. So the original implementation is working, and we wanna apply some Rx to this. Our starting point is the list of tasks, the list of tasks that communicate with the web servers. As always, we need observables. Well, how do we do this? Time for something new. We project our running tasks and every task represents a search for a list of cheapest flights for a specific airline. And we can use the two observable extension method. This is part of the directive extensions. And then we call merge. So what is going on here is that you can think of all these searches that are going on um, and picture maybe a highway. And on this highway or freeway, we've got three lanes where cars are driving and eventually they all wanna leave the freeway. So they all have to merge into this one exit. And whenever a car is approaching that exit, that's when we're looking at it. So we don't care which one it is, if it's the one from the first, the second or the third lane, we just pick the one that arrives. So we subscribe, we are standing in this highway exit and whenever something arrives there, we know it's a list of flight prices from one of the airlines. So one of the requests has returned and then we call our helper method for now and we find the cheapest flight price. Let's just verify that this is still working and finds our prices and there we go we found our cheapest price 1055 bucks so apparently this is still working now let's stop here and we want to see if we can further improve this because this here has got a problem if we wanted to await for this to complete we can't do it so this is just not possible the, there is no observable returned here that can be awaited. There's no task returned here. So let's see if we can change this. And our second version is a bit more complicated. The first part is exactly the same. We again need our projection here. We turn our tasks into observables. Again, we merge everything. And now here's the thing, instead of using the or instead of performing the search inside the subscription, we do the processing as part of the observation. And for this, we have the do extension. So this allows you to execute something on every item that, that arrives. And there we place our code that does the scanning. So whenever we have uh, one search result or one web request result, we process it and then we add the take extension. Adding take allows us to return an observable that can then be awaited. So that's why we have it there. And the thing with take is that it will only complete if all of our observable slash tasks have signal completion. And that's why we can now wait for all of the airlines being processed. And then we can have our weight back. So let's verify this is working, we can run it. And this time Delta has got the cheapest price and you see it really waits for the result. So depending on whether you need the await or not, uh, either option one or two may be for you. In general, I would say if we data bind to a property, we would not need to wait for the result. And now finally, just like before, the pure Rx version that eliminates this helper method and instead tries to tell a story. As before, we start with our running tasks. Second line, let's project this. Let's turn the tasks into observables. 
we then of course want to merge again so all of this is unchanged however now um, let's see if we can eliminate this call to update cheapest flight so what we are looking for is the cheapest price from one of the flights of an airline and then from all of the cheapest flights that have been returned we want to again search for the cheapest so let's first project our flight prices for a specific airline and find the cheapest one using the minimum extension which you can see here and then we want to wait for all of the airlines that's what we need next because once we have all of them that means we have found all of the minimums and from all of the minimums that we have found we now need the cheapest one and this is just another call to the min extension and now look at this we have got a beautiful story we have got our tasks we project them we merge them together we then select the minimum from the list of flights for a specific airline and if we have all the airlines well then we can find out what is the cheapest of all of them and we can wait for this now let's run it see if it's still working and we find that our cheapest price is 1009 us dollars so this is the final version and like i said depending on your requirements then the first second or third version that we have seen here might be the one for you and it shows the power of rx and that's it i would like to thank you for watching you can find all of the code in the github repo which is linked in the description